So in this series, we're going to learn from our multi-homing examples that we covered earlier on to have a look at some particular BGP case studies. Several of these case studies are based on real live examples that the Network Startup Resource Center team have worked with various operators in different parts of the world. We're going to look at several of these. Um, the first one we'll have a look at is what's known as peering priorities. Now, when we're covering the multi-homing slides, we talked about setting local preferences for different types of customers. Now, as network operators move from having a single upstream to deploying BGP with multiple external connections, they need to have a more formal process for how these priorities are set up. We need to establish priorities for BGP customers. We need to establish priorities for different peering partners, because some partners might be more significant than some of the others. And we need to establish cost or benefits for participating at different exchange points, because it's quite common for certainly the larger operators to participate at more than one internet exchange point. We also need to establish the cost or benefits for different transit connections, again, for the same reason, some transit connections may cost more, have different latencies, different contention provided by the upstream provider, and so forth. So the typical prioritization would be something like this. The most preferred would be BGP customers, because we would like traffic from us and from the internet to go to our BGP customers directly, not via our peers or our transits. The next preference would be our private peers. We want traffic from us to go to our private peers over the direct cross-connect. We won't want this to go over, say, the local exchange point, or the regional exchange point, or even our paid transit, because a private peer connection is usually a direct fiber cross-connect that both we and our private peer can control directly. The next preference would be the local internet exchange point. The local internet exchange point has all our local traffic, all our local peers, and we prefer to keep local traffic as local as possible. It's quite likely that some of our local peers would participate in regional exchange points, and of course, they'll be visible through our last resort transit provider. So we really do want to keep our local traffic crossing the local exchange point. Following that, we'd have the regional exchange point. This might be in another country, or it might even be in another continent. Again, the idea is to try and keep regional traffic regional and avoid having peered traffic going over our transit connection. And the last resort, or last preference as is called in the slide, the last resort would be the paid transit. And this will cost money for the physical connectivity and for the traffic and no doubt will come at significant latency and quite likely with potential lack of bandwidth impact as well. The slide shows a typical set of local preferences that an operator might be using. So for our BGP customer, we would set local pref 250. Our private peer, we would set local pref 200. The local exchange point, we probably set local pref 170. The regional exchange point, we set local pref 140. Of course, the default local preference is 100. And then we would have a primary paid transit provider, maybe local pref 50, and a backup paid transit if we have a second transit provider going down to local pref 40. These values are just examples. If you look around at what different operators do, they all have this structure in the local pref settings, but the values they use will be entirely up to their own choice.